In this video, we are going to be talking about what to do when your trade is in trouble and how to keep your losses small, since that's my mantra here. So first thing that you need to do is make sure that you're planning your exit before you even enter the trade. You need to know where you're going to get out, what you're going to do, what your strategy is going to be if the market does what you don't want it to do. OK, so we're going to go through a couple of options that you have if that is the case. So when it comes time to execute, you're not stuck thinking or, you know, not sure exactly what to do. So stopping losses. First thing that you can do is place a stop loss order. So a stop loss order is something that you enter with your broker and tell the broker if your trade gets to a certain price as far as the options price you're going to go ahead and trigger this order to enter a market order whenever that gets triggered to exit the trade immediately now just because you set a particular number for your stop does not mean that is what your order is going to execute at so you have to keep that in mind so in other words if you set a stop to exit your order at one dollar your order is only going to be triggered when the market reaches one dollar. You could actually exit at a worse dollar amount for yourself than um, that particular dollar because it's a market order. So you have to keep that in mind. But you enter that order and basically the broker will take care of everything else for you. So you don't have to sit and watch your trade. So that has some pluses, but it also has some minuses with it. The minus for me is that the market sometimes prints rogue prints or orders that aren't necessarily valid. And your broker is not going to discern whether or not those prices are valid. It's just going to mechanically trigger the order. So it's possible that your stop loss can get triggered, even though your order is not actually in trouble. And that can cost you commissions that can cost you a day trade um, and, you know, just progress in general where it didn't have to. So something to keep in mind there. The next one is a mental stop. So this is basically you keeping track of where the market is and what the pricing is doing and deciding if it does a certain thing, you're going to go ahead and manually close out your order. So I think the pluses and minuses with that should be pretty obvious. But just in case, the plus is you don't have to worry about getting your stop triggered prematurely or it's some kind of, uh, you know, the market can chase around and move around a little bit on you or whatever. Um, and you have some flexibility as far as getting out. But that is also the con to this as well is that flexibility because it can cause you to second guess yourself. You can get into thinking of smoking hopium where you hope the market is going to bounce. You're just going to give it a little bit more and a little bit more before you know it, you're in deep trouble. Um, so something to consider. Um, but this is actually what I personally do is a mentally a, a mental stop. But I also account for the cons of the mental stop. The next thing that you can do is to roll out. So rolling out is basically closing out your order and opening up a new order further out in time. So if you are, say, at a strike of 4100 and your trade is getting into trouble and your trade is due today, what you would do is close that particular order and then open a new order at the 4100 for, say, tomorrow or the day after or whatever the case may be on side. That is rolling out. The pluses is that you buy yourself more time and in general are taking in some sort of a credit, assuming that you're not in the money already. So because there's more time and more time premium attached to further out in time trades, those further out in time trades are going to carry more credit then closer in time trades, which means that you are most likely going to walk away with an additional credit if the trade works out. Uh, the minus is that you are not getting any further away as far as pricing 
from the market. So if you're wrong, you can continue to be more wrong and dig yourself deeper in the hole. So something to watch out there as well. Rolling away. Rolling away would be getting further away from the market. It's basically the same thing as rolling out. Just your direction is different. Instead of out in time, you are getting further away in the market in the same time frame. So again, with if your trade is at 4100 and you're in a put spread, the market is above you, but it is getting closer to you. The rolling away would be, say, rolling down to maybe a 4050 or something like that to give yourself more space for the trade to work out. Now, this is going to result in a debit, which means that you're going to have to have cash on the side to be able to roll further away. And you, you're either going to need cash on the side to pay for the debit or you're going to need cash on the side to add contracts so that you have a total net credit on that particular trade. But either way, it's going to cost more to close the bad trade than it is to get than the credit you're going to receive on the new trade, all else being equal. So obviously the pluses for that is that you are not putting yourself in danger tomorrow and tying up capital and all of that stuff to just buy yourself more time. You're actually buying yourself more space, but the con is going to be cost associated with that. You can also roll out in a way, which is a combination of both. Um, if I'm going to roll, this is probably my preference, which is, which is to be out in a way. And this is going to be rolling your trade or closing your existing trade and choosing a new strike that is further out in time and further away from where the market is. Now, these trades, you can either roll for even usually depending on how far away the market is from your position. You can get an even roll, which means that the new trade that you enter is going to pay you the same amount of credit as the trade that you just got out of cost you in debits. You can sometimes also pick up a credit with this, albeit not as much as if you were just rolling out. Uh, sometimes you can go ahead and pick up a credit with this type of trade. And then if you're if the market is really close to you, it's going to be less and less likely the market uh, gets closer to you that you're going to be able to roll out and away at a credit. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. The dangers or risk with this particular thing is going to be similar to rolling out just less danger or less risk because you are also buying yourself more space as well as time. But the risk is still similar, just not as pronounced. Rolling to the strong side. So this is interesting as well. So what this is, is closing your existing trade and then taking up a position on the opposite side of the market. So if you put spread and the market is bearing down on your trade, you go ahead and close it and you flip to the call side and place a trade there. So this can be a little bit tricky um, because markets can rebound. They can retrace and all of that stuff. So you have to be careful. I would advise that you treat this trade as an entirely new trade, as I would honestly for all roles, but especially this one. Um, analyze the market and everything like that and make sure that you would place this trade regardless of rolling or not, because the market can retrace right on top of you and keep you in trouble where you might as well stay where you were in the first place. But in a strong trending market, this can be a powerful tool to recoup some of your costs, um, some of your losses um, and get you closer back to profitability. And if the market is really trending and you flip sides, you can also ride the market towards you could just ride the trend so you can ride once you flip, you can ride your first trade down to almost worthless, close it and then roll down and down and down and step down and follow the market or up depending on which direction you're going and just follow the market trend until you can't follow it safely. You also have the short leg buyback. So what this is, is you you don't close your entire trade. You're only going to close the short leg 
because essentially the short leg is what is getting you in trouble. That's what's costing you money. So what you do is you buy back only the short leg and leave your long leg to run. And this works very well if you have a very strong trending market again, um, where the market is really bearing down and trending towards a certain direction towards your strike. You remove your strike, your short strike from danger, and then you let your insurance strike go ahead and keep con um, continuing to collect premium and let it run. So the risk with this is if the market stops trending or is not as trending as hard as you would like, um, because when you're dealing with long options, you're dealing with theta decay, especially when you're talking about zero DTE, um, theta decay is really going to be bearing down. So especially if the what what would typically be the case is you're not in the money yet. It has not reached your short strike. You go ahead and buy that short strike back let your uh, long option run, but it's not going to start running really hard until it gets in the money. So before it gets into the money, you have to be sure um, or reasonably sure that the market is going to keep going in the direction that it's going and essentially going to get in the money is really what you need. OK, because also your long leg can also expire worthless and you don't want that. So you can also combine if you're really sure and positive about the direction of the market at the time, you can combine the short leg buyback with the roll to the strong side and open up a strong side trade to ride both sides of the market, you know, the market trend. OK, so you can combine both of those or you can really just leave this alone, because if your trade does get in the money after you've bought back the short leg, you're really not going to need any other trade. Uh, the, the long leg is really going to um, profit very well for you if it keeps going in that direction. So you really don't need to do anything else at that particular time. So one thing to watch out for the short leg buyback is, again, you have to have some credit in your account to be able to afford to buy back the short leg. It's going to be more costly uh, to buy back just a short leg than it is to buy back the entire spread. So you have to be aware of that as well. And then you have one of my favorites as well, Delta hedging. Now with Delta hedging, you're going to need to not have to worry about the pattern day trade rule, which means you're gonna require 25K or more because there's a lot of trading that goes on with the Delta hedge. But basically what a Delta hedge is, it's assuming that you are in an iron condor and you are paying attention to your net Delta. Your net delta is going to tell you in which direction the market moves that is going to benefit you or hurt you. So what delta hedging is going to do is you are going to constantly or not constantly, but every once in a while, uh, close orders where the delta is going against you and add to orders where the delta is moving in your favor. So if you're in an iron condor and the market starts moving up, you're going to start closing your call spread on top and your put spread on bottom, and you're going to shift them in the direction of the market in an attempt to keep your delta at zero. So this is requires, you know, more trading than we do uh, with this particular strategy as is. But this is a good strategy to keep the market kind of right dead center where you want it to be in between your strikes. Now, this the risk here is that if you have a very trending uh, direction market, so Delta hedging gets very difficult if the market is just trending and trending and trending in one direction. It's going to work best if you have a choppy market um, or a market that's kind of respecting things like pivot points and, and different um, lines like that. But Delta hedging is definitely a viable way to keep from having heavy losses because what you're essentially doing is just staying away from the market. You're essentially just rolling um, as a strategy um, to keep away from the market. So you're not going to have those heavy losses unless, again, the market is trending straight at your strikes. So it gets difficult there. All right, so let's just talk about the seven market directions. So the market is going to go basically 
in one of seven directions. And for this particular this particular diagram, we're going to assume that we are only trading puts and we're selling puts. And if that's the case, there's only two directions that are really going to hurt. you. The market can go in any of the other five and you're going to make money. The market goes in the last two, then you're going to lose. That's the inherent advantage of trading um, and selling premium. But, uh, you know, this is these are the uh, different market directions. So six and seven are the directions that we are worried about if we are put traders and obviously one and two if we were call traders. So you just have to keep that in mind. So we'll look at that when we're talking about which orders to apply where. So if we're having a number six trending market, which is trending towards our strike, but it's not going straight down. Um, then you are going to want to look at just a stop loss order. This is the easiest thing to do, but also again, you can get stopped out um, if the market, you know, fakes on you or anything, else, head fakes and all that kind of stuff. You also can have a mental stop. Like I said, this is my preferred order. My preferred stop loss method currently um, is to just kind of feel out the market, see where it's going, set levels where you know this is my um drop dead level or whatever and then go ahead and get out once i am once i reach that particular level you can roll out you can roll away you can roll out in a way and you could delta hedge in this type of market so almost all of the stop loss methods are viable here but not all of them so the nightmare of any a uh, put trader or credits trader is a type seven uh, trending market, which is, is just barreling straight towards you like a freight train. Um, it's not stopping to collect $200 or anything. So for this, again, a stop loss order is going to work very quickly. You're going to be glad that you had a stop loss order in this kind of market. A mental stop. This is a little bit tougher in this type of market, because if you know market behavior and market theory, you're probably going to think in a contrarian way, which is looking for a bounce, looking for a rebound, looking for a retracement if the market is dropping this this hard. Um, but you just don't know where that bounce is going to be or how high the bounce is going to be. So you can't take any chances. So a mental stop is still viable right here. If you start to see the market really, really rolling over and flushing really hard, um, a mental stop will still get you out if you are uh, disciplined. Rolling to the strong side. So this is the perfect market to just flip the trade and get on the strong side of the market, flip to a call spread and then ride those call spreads right on down with the market. This is the perfect situation to do that. Um, you can also close the short leg. This is another perfect situation for closing the short leg because this is really going to be profitable if uh, it continues down and goes through your long strike and gets that long strike in the money. You're gonna be very happy that you closed that short leg if that's the case, because that thing is going to explode. So you have this for a type seven trending market. And then lastly, if you fail, all of this stuff fails and you don't get out what to do if your strike is breached. In my opinion, there's really not much you can pray or you can close immediately and salvage what you can. Okay, we don't want our strikes breach when we're trading this far away from the market. If we were, if we had a setup where we were trading closer, you could withstand a strike breach, but this far away where you're only collecting 15, maybe 20 cents um, on, your, on your trades, it's just not survivable or viable to wait until the market breaches your strike so again you once you get to this point you're basically in stay in prey mode or just trying to salvage whatever you can that's up to you my advice is don't let this happen under any circumstances um, at this level all right so that's how you keep your losses small uh, and how how you make decisions as far as exiting trades, as far as I am concerned. Of course, this is all my opinion. 
You can definitely disagree. I'm sure other traders out there are going to disagree with me. That's fine. We can talk about it in the comments and I'm happy to have that discussion. But this is my take on it. Hope you have a great day.